I'm just going to raise awareness about the Sikh faith. If any of you guys want to hear about the Sikhs, come on over. Um, just, uh, just the bare bones, uh, quickly. It was started about 500 years, years ago uh, by Guru Nanak Dev Ji Maharaj, who we see as the actual embodiment of uh, God upon earth. He came here to spread um, what we'd say a unique message, but obviously parts of that message are reflected in other scriptures as well uh, and other faiths. Um, so Gunan Deji's message, what was it? It was very simple. It was the fact that all of us are one uh, human race and there's only one creator. Now there's nothing unique about the fact that there's one creator, we're all one human race. But what he said was, is that everybody can connect to God. They can experience God. It's not just an idea. So the Guru's message was one creator, one human race, but more importantly that all of us can experience God. Yeah? And that experience, he said, is from at the top of the head. If we meditate yeah, and we live a good life, we can actually experience God whilst we're alive. So it's kind of like what you might hear about in yoga and places like that when they talk about the chakras and things like this. But it's a bit more practical as opposed to sort of sitting down um, and uh, moving your body about and taking all sorts of awkward poses that you might think the average person is like, I can't do that mate, you know what I mean? Yeah? It was a bit more practical. The message is very simple, that if you love God, if you pray, if you um, sing, so singing is very much part of the Sikh faith. And if you actually help people, if you go out there and help people, then that creator who loves you will do grace upon you. And that grace is that you start to experience God. So the experience of God is kind of like having God's grace. So for us, uh, the message is very simple. One creator, one human race, and everybody should connect. What was nice about this message, and what is still nice about this message, is that it's very inclusive. It's not telling people you've got to convert to be a Sikh to get this experience or that you have to convert otherwise you're going to go to hell. The Sikh faith is trying to tell people you don't have to convert. The point is that everybody has a chance to experience the divine no matter what faith they are. Yeah? So the Guru when they were travelling around actually they're the second most travelled person in history. When they travelled they didn't try to convert people but people still became Sikhs. But other people were strengthened in their faith even if they weren't Sikhs. If somebody was a Muslim they might become a stronger Muslim. They might become a more practicing Muslim. If somebody was a Christian, they might become a more practicing Christian. The aim was not to get people to convert. The aim was to get people to believe and experience God more in their normal life. When you die, uh, firstly your family is going to cry, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's, if you're liked, you know, all that kind of stuff. In terms of what you're probably referring to, i.e. judgment, uh, we do believe that you do get judged. Uh, but the judgment is not the kind of judgment that you might expect, i.e. one judgment day for everybody. So in a lot of faiths, that they, they have this idea that there's one judgment day. You've heard of that, sir? Yeah? That there's one judgment day. Yeah, but what God is this? Is it the, the, the one. Is it the Abrahamic God? The same as the Muslims and the Christians? Or is it the... I think at the core, it's the one, well obviously at the core, it's the one God that made everything. Now. Just like an elephant might be touched by people at different points and decide that he's a bit like a snake or he's a bit like a trunk or he's a bit like a, a foot. People have different descriptions of the same one God. But what Guru says is that the one God is beyond any of our understanding. So it is the same God, but people understand him differently. So I wouldn't say our God is different from the Christian faith. That's a good question. I'll come back to that after I just deal with this brother's question here about what happens after death. So we believe that everybody's going to get judged, right? Which seems a bit fair because if somebody's done really bad stuff, like let's say a Hitler of the type, you expect him to get some come come up and see, you might call it, right? He's going to get judged. For what we believe is that everybody goes up, but they get judged as soon as they die. So as soon as we die, we get our judgment. And as the traditional thing goes, you got a book, and in the book is written all your good stuff. Now the things that are written in there are your thoughts, your words, and your deeds, right? Man bachakaram is what we call it in Punjabi. So you're, what you were thinking what you said and what you did. You might think, well, only the things that I did are important. But that's not true because, you know, I'm sure girls know, um, when, you're, when people talk about you, yeah, it can ruin lives. So words do matter. And then obviously your thoughts matter because I might be sitting here saying one thing and inside me is some other kind of uh, thing in my head. So then there's a, there's, a, there's a hypocrisy inside me. And that hypocrisy will be made evident as well.
So what happens when you, when, on that judgment, that's a bit of a different question. So when we get judged, then there's different options, as you might expect anyway, right? But you said that a Muslim, yeah. within the Sikh faith, yeah. he can be a better Muslim. So you're, you're saying you're not converting, you're not, so it's a meditation, it's not religion. So maybe this is the point. Many, many people have said Sikhism is not just like a religion, because it's more like a way of life. So let's say, you were a long distance runner, as it's quite a lot, we moved from there to here because there's quite a lot of runners. So imagine you were a runner, right? And then you met some other guy who was also a runner. Now the, the science you're applying is the same, yeah? That you've got to keep fit, you've got to eat properly. So it, it's irrelevant whether you are sponsored by one charity or another charity. The reality is you're all on this run. Everybody's running, yeah? So we see it more like a, a sort of a, a way of living, as opposed to say a specific religion name. So although we do have all the, the things of a religion, we do have a scripture, we do have um, beliefs, but if somebody doesn't have those same beliefs, they might have um, a way of behaving, a way of living, which actually you might say is in line with what the Gurus talked about. So therefore they will still be judged, like it's a race and everybody who's good at running gets to win prizes. Regardless of what charity they were raising money for. Yeah? But it is it is to say the same. It is say that we are human beings, we have to be and this is by the way not atheist. Any human being he will tell you we need to be nice to people, we need to be good to people and this is all religions by the way. And all Well there's a big difference in atheism and all religion, isn't it? Yeah, but I mean... Because there's, there's no, no good. Yeah, but, but you are saying that, that, that something else. You are saying that... No, we have a God. The atheists don't, don't believe there is a God. But you are saying that this God is manifested in a human being who is guru. He no. was embodiment. It's a good question. Uh, it, it, my throat's a bit low. Could you mind coming a bit, just a little bit closer? Sorry. <laughs> I don't want to be shouting. If you guys could come a little bit closer, that'd be helpful as well. Um, God, God is not here to... Obviously, the atheist is missing out on the main thing, which is experiencing God, right? So the atheist is, but is being a good person. But for me, like this tripod's got three legs, yeah? <coughs> without this, um, without one of the legs, it's going to fall over. No matter if it's got two good legs, it still fall over. You understand that, right? So if someone's being a good person, they're sharing, they're being honest, that's great. But the problem is they're still missing one leg, and that leg is the meditation upon God's name. Good. Yeah? So, so if somebody is an, is an atheist, they will get... Um, they will fail. That test they will fail because they're basically running with one leg. Yeah, they're not going to make it. This is a good step because now there is judgment and if they don't believe in God, then this will make them fail and obviously will go to heaven. I would say further than um, just believe in God. If they don't experience God, you know like there's 1.6 billion Muslims, right? Do a lot of them, do a lot of them not pray? Yes. A lot of them don't do their prayer every day, five prayers a day, yeah? You must have that problem yourself. You must be, there must be Muslim preachers trying to get Muslims to be better Muslims. Agreed? So what are they trying to do? They're saying, listen, it's not enough that you believe in God. You've got to do your prayers. <laughs> yeah? A similar thing to what we're saying. We're saying to Muslims, it's not enough that you just believe in God. You also got to start praying, meditating, experiencing God. So we believe that the experience is more important than just saying that you believe in a religion. So this is a good point. Because why? Now, when our preacher say to us this, he is conveying the message of God. Yeah. And now, the most important thing about Sikh, about Islam, about any other religion is to know who is God. Yeah. If you are saying to me that the Guru is embodiment of God and he came 500 years, yeah. just 500 That's right. years, we need to know two things. How he is embodiment of God. Yeah. I'll explain and, it to you. And, and if it is really God, and what differentiates your God from my God, from or there is one God, but everyone has his own version. Yeah, so that's right. In Islam, we say that God is one. Yeah. Unique. Yeah. No associate, no part. Yeah. Nothing like him, mm. and he has uh, nice names and attributes. He conveyed to us. Exactly. And he has no associates. We don't worship Muhammad, peace be upon him. Any Muslim who worship Muhammad, peace be upon him, then he is associated with God. Anybody worshipping or asking any good L Let man. me explain to you, bro, what our concept of God is, so you can understand. I know where you're going with this. Yes, sir. Okay, I know, I, I, know where you, I know where you're going with it. How is God described in the Sikh faith? God is described for some time, because you can't really describe God. Yeah? But we can give analogies. So I'm going to give you two analogies that will help you. Yeah. Firstly, the Guru used the analogy of an ocean. So imagine a big ocean, 
right? What is that ocean? It's made up of water. Agreed? What is water but drops of water? So the ocean is basically drops of water. So in the same way, we are like a drop of water compared to the ocean. Now, we, as a drop of water, we're like an impure drop. It's like additives added, you know, our lust, anger, pride, the things that make us impure, right? They're so that we can't see clearly because we've got all these impurities on top of us. So what the Guru is saying is that he is a bit like a purified drop of water, yeah? Or you might say a wave that comes out of the ocean and it's going to go back into the ocean. You know when you look at a wave, let me, let me, I'll tell you that in a second. You know when you look at a wave, it looks like it's different from the ocean. The ocean's underneath and the wave comes up. But actually that wave is part of the ocean. It's just water manifested separately but it's going to go back. So that's one analogy, that the, the water and the wave. Yeah. So the Guru is like the wave and he's coming to help us uh, experience what's inside us. Yeah. The second analogy is that of the sun and the moon. When you're at night time, there is no sun. Otherwise, obviously, it's daytime, right? But the moon, he ref the moon reflects the sun. And it reflects the light of the sun. So in the same way, the Guru reflects the light of the sun. Now, sometimes you only have half a moon or a third, a quarter of the moon. So the moon is not fully reflecting all the light of the sun. But when the moon is complete and is pure, then in that way, it reflects all the sun. So for us, the Guru is like a complete moon reflecting God's light. He's got no ego in there, which is uh, changing things. And also for us, the Guru is like the wave of the ocean, a complete, um, a complete, he, he, he is. What is the difference between you and Christianity, but you came later after Christianity? Well, there's one, one big, there's one big difference. Firstly, we've got the revelation of the Gurus. Christ left very little revelation. You agree with me? There's very few words that he said, these are my words and these are written down. With Christ, it was slightly different. With the Gurus, there was a couple of differences. Firstly, there was 10 of them. That was the other point. So there was 10 Gurus. The first one came and then after him, he went to the next one, then the next one, next one. There was 10 Gurus. 500 years ago, the first Guru came, Guru Nanak Dev Ji. And then now, uh, 300 years ago, there was a, the 10th Guru. So there was a 200 year period of one person being in charge. One of the problems with Christianity, I'm sure you'll appreciate that, is that Christ was only preaching for a little while, right? You know that, right? Christ only around for, was it three years or two years? He wasn't around for a long time. Now, in order for you to change people, it takes a long time. Change society. Imagine now, if we want to change our society away from the way it is. It's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take a long time, right? So the Gurus were around for a long time, 200 years. Plus, they were giving revelation for a long time. 200 years, they were reciting and revealing God's words to us. So it came in different ways and different styles and it helped people to understand what is the truth. But all heavenly religions, all heavenly religions, we in Islam, we believe in Christianity, we believe in Judaism, and we know that our Prophet is the final messenger. All of them, they have books. Yeah. Uh, the rules, revelation, and miracles. And right. then the last messenger, Muhammad, has a message, a miracle for that everyone would have it, which is the Quran, a book which is preserved. And we are here to listen. No, no, okay, he's not, but he's, he's making, the, the point you're making, you're going to be a bit short. All, 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 all he's saying is, I, I appreciate his point. What, I leave him and say what he wants. What, what he, I think what he's saying is just make the question shorter, yeah, which is fair, right? Now the point is, your question is, what do we have as a revelation? We have the scripture that our Gurus gave us. It's a unique scripture, okay, the Gurus made it from beginning to end. I can claim I am a Guru. True, you could, and people might even follow you. Who knows, you might even get a couple of followers, you might get thousands, you might get millions. But that's irrelevant from our point of view because for us, how do we know, how do we know the Guru got the revelation from God? What is the, uh, for your claim, what, what, what is the proof of I'm getting claim? to it bro, chill, I know what he's saying. By the way, he's not angry, but this is his Okay, so what, uh, what we have as a proof is one, what the message does for us. Let's say, like I said to you earlier, I'm a long distance runner, for example. Like I said earlier, we're running, running, yeah? How do I know that the coach is a good coach if I'm a long distance runner? He helps me to become good at running. So as my time improves, as I start to experience being better at what he's promising me, hold on, hold on, hold on, let, let me, let, no, no, you gotta let me finish bro. The Guru, when he came here, there was people around already that were preaching. There was already Islam, there was already uh, Christianity, Hinduism. So these religions already existed. So how did the people start following this Guru 
and start believing that he is actually God's words and he's telling God's light because so what, well, bro, you, you got to stop. To Sorry, bro. Why? Wait a second, yeah. How do we know that he's speaking revelation? We know that because of how what he said and the effect that we have upon us. The words of the Guru are not just. Hold on, the words of the Guru are not just for us instructions. But then yeah, the they have an effect upon the soul. The they, hold on, the you're not listening. They have a civilization, bigger civilization now. So then you should follow them, I should follow them. If this is the they, like I said to you earlier, there's an effect upon the soul of the Guru's words. You understand that? It's an experience. I'm not talking about belief. I'm not talking about belief. This guy interrupts quite a lot. But let me, bro, bro, you know, we're having a conversation. In a conversation, there's mutual respect there's mutual respect and there's people waiting for someone to answer a question and then you answer back so if if, if you do not want to listen if you don't want to listen no but you're interrupting I'm answering this brother's point you know let me finish my point he's asked me a question he's actually Muslim just like you so let me answer this question okay so what I said to you earlier that there's an experience of God and the experience happens from the word when we read the Guru's words we have an experience of God so the Guru's revelation has a proof in itself and the revelation is the experience of God that you get from it. Guru Sahib says, Guru Sahib says in Bani, ki, uh, Okay, listen, the word that comes, the Guru says that Amrit Bani Har Har Teri Sun Sun Hove Param Gat Meri As we start to listen to God's immortal words, we will start to have the immortal experience of the Divine. That experience is ineffable. The word ineffable means that you can't explain it. Here man, right here you can experience the divine. It's everywhere, but you can't like for example I experience great for example not having any religion. You know with your eyes you can see to an atheist his religion makes a lot more sense than any other atheist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. Uh, kind so, of problem yeah. Yes, of course, yeah. of course. Human kind yeah, yeah, of course. Just to, just to talk about the experience, because people ask that question. What do we think about the experience of God? It's not, it's, you might say it's subjective, but you know when I was studying philosophy, so I, I studied philosophy at university, they said to me that when, I, when you any study philosophy, colour is subjective. I was like, no, it's not subjective, colour is objective. They go, no, no, colour is subjective. Everybody's got their own interpretation of colour. But actually, because of the human race, we all agree that this is black and this is grey, then we do agree, we have a consistency. So, hold on. When, there is a wavelength in every color and if you know it very well then you can identify right. it scientific. So the saints, so, so let me prove it to you using that analogy, let me use that analogy. Let's say you, you live in the, in the kingdom of people that were quite blind, like most of the people are blind, yeah, 90% and some people could see, right? Now the 10% that can see, they get to decide what the colors are. Not the 90% that can't see, the 10% that can see, they get to decide what the colors are. So hold on, let me get to the, let me finish the point. So when you've got Sikhi, Sikhi is giving you a whole bunch of teachings that are consistent across different faiths. So if you look at Lady Julian of Norwich and she's sitting there talking about the revelation of divine love, you can see in her revelations the same truth that you might see in, uh, for example, Rumi in Saudi Arabia or Kabirji or Fariji. People of different faiths all talking about the same thing, the experience of God, which starts off by being about love. It starts off by being about divine bliss. So these things are consistent across the religion and it's a bit like colour. It's consistent by those that can see the colour. So there's the proof is in the experience and the people that have had the experience, you consist with them. Okay, now you can go bro. Yeah. Do you believe that I as a Muslim, if I follow Islam, I will attain salvation or I don't, no, I don't believe that. I have a little, there's a little bit, there's a little, uh, what do you call it? Like a, you know when you have like the, the small print, the small print, I'll give you the small print. If you as a Muslim, if you follow Islam, exactly like, for example, the Guru says Islam is, then you, if the Guru gives the definition of Islam, in Gurbani, the Guru starts to define what is a true Muslim. If you start to uh, live your life as per a true Muslim, by what the Guru is defining, then you will get blessed. But let's say, let's say today you decide that the ISIS definition of Islam is the best way. And you go, I want to be a Daesh, I want to fall. Yeah, you will not get in. I'm saying a Muslim that prays, he fasts, he goes for Hajj, he doesn't bother anyone, he doesn't hurt anyone. Is this Muslim going to go to heaven, yes or no? That's, those, those things that you talked about, the Guru says, they're kind of irrelevant. What Guru starts talking about is the quality, let mercy, let mercy be his mosque, let compassion, let him have mercy, compassion. No, but you said if he prays five times a day, if he goes to, you talked about actions. No, no, if you're a merciful 
You're merciful. And, yeah, okay. And you do the things that you're supposed to do as a Muslim. Well, even if you pray five times a day, you might already believe in God. You might be doing it because someone's got... You know that yourself, there's people that don't believe in... Are you adding to the things that your Guru said? No, 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 no. Because Guru didn't say the things you said. No, no, he said exactly those words. What did he say? He said, you cannot be a true Muslim. I'll give it to you now. I'll give you a true message. I've got the Gurbani here, but I, have to, I mean, it's irrelevant for me to quote to you the Gurbani. You won't understand it. But I'll tell you what he said. He said, you've got to have mercy, you've got to have compassion, you've got to have good actions, you've got to have um, faith, you've got to have um, on God, in the one Allah. In the one Allah, but he is defining good Muslim. So why he is not a Muslim himself? I'll tell you why. Because Islam is limited in our view. It's, it takes you to a certain level, which is quite good. But it doesn't take you the whole way. So he's not a Muslim because what he sees in Islam is not the... For example, does Islam have a philosophy about experiencing God from up here? Yes or no? No? Yes or no? Revelation was done by prophets No, no. I'm not talking about Revelation. I'm not, I'm not talking about Revelation. Let me clarify. I'm not talking about Revelation. I'm talking about the experience of God from up here. Does Islam... could feel that he is having... Feeling something up here. Yeah. Crazy man. There are... No, not crazy man. There's many Muslims that feel that bliss as well. But does he have it in the Quran? No, no, no. Written down. So you see how it's limited? No, it's not limited. Okay. That, I'm just... No, from our point of view. From our point of view, it's limited, yeah? Also, does it talk about music in heaven? No, music in heaven. Heaven. In heaven you will have things that you don't compare with this. Is there music in heaven? <laughs> Do you know the heaven? Have you been I'm there? asking you. Have you been there? No, no, I'm asking have you, bro. You in your I haven't been there. Okay, uh, the Guru gives us a definition. I haven't been there. Does the Prophet Muhammad describe it? No, no, no. Muhammad, peace be upon Does he, he said there are pleasures that you cannot imagine. Does he describe music in heaven? I haven't heard about Okay, it. fine. So the, the Guru tells us. No, look, um, you, you ask me what's the difference? My brother, God you feel something in their minds. Bro, you God asked me a question. It's realistic religion. No, 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 no. It's, it's realistic to experience God. I've been experiencing God for 15 years. I'm a normal person. I've got a normal job. It's totally realistic to experience God. You experience God. Of course. Why do you think I'm here talking about it? Am I going to sit over and tell you that you can experience God if I don't? Yes, you experience it. Islam, we don't experience We see the God's actions. Imagine, look, my message to, for example, the people here. You know, your, your teachings are similar to Buddhist teachings. Exactly, I know. The Buddha said, do not believe, do not say anything. Experience. Only with your heart and mind, yeah. then say yes. Yeah. 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 No, no, I know that you would be Okay, let me, let me just, for example, the question here. What's similar between Christianity, uh, between Sikhi and Buddhism, very similar Buddhism and Christianity. The idea of experiencing experiencing something through meditation. The Guru says that you can meditate and you can experience God. You are allowed to experience anything. You are allowed Look, I know that you're not right. You're making it very evident you don't like Islam. I know you don't like Islam, but I don't have a problem with Islam. Yeah, no, I don't have a problem with Islam. No. Yeah, they have that. Bad Muslims did bad things to the Sikhs, but I don't hate Islam in the slightest, yeah? There are loads of good Muslims and there's no problem. So, well, actually, there's quite a few conversations between me and Muslims that have been very friendly. But the thing is that people only see what they want to see. Some people, their hearts are filled with hate. They only see hate. Yeah, they look around. They only see hate. But those people that have love, those that see love, no, no. But I'm saying this is a bit. We are helping people. You know, when people like yourself come along, interrupt, then there is a bit of animosity. You're right. But when, when you, this, no, no, I can handle it, bro. No problem. But the reality is that the way that you speak is impolite. It's impolite. You don't have to be impolite in conversation. It's I've got, got him on camera. No, 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 no. In Speaker's Corner, you're not here to heckle people. You're here to listen and conversate. You're behaving in an ag 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 aggressive manner. And that's the reality. But anyway, I, well, you've actually interpreted. So the question is, when we look at the... Just to go back to the human idea, guys, I know you're having a lovely conversation here. Please feel free to take it away from here. Okay, guys, bye sub. Hello. If you guys, you're being a, you're being obstructive right here. If you want to have a conversation, please go. Yeah. Okay. Good. I'm sharing the goodness of Sikhism. That guy there is sharing the goodness of Islam. If you want to share the goodness of Islam. To okay, he listened to me, yeah? Please. So let me just arm up on the podium. Okay. If you want to get a bench, get a bench, feel free and chat all you like. Let me, let me, because there's people here listening, let me just go back to the point. 
we are here, we are here to talk about the Sikh faith, the, what the Sikhs believe. The message of the Sikhs religion is very much inclusive. It's not an exclusive religion that says that you must be a Sikh in order, believe, shush, in order for you to get to heaven. It doesn't say that. The message is very simple. All of us human beings have come upon earth to experience the divine. Okay? And the divine is inside us. And the way to, divi the way to experience the divine is by, first of all, being a merciful and loving person. Right? The second thing is that if you meditate, now, a lot of people don't believe in meditation. They think it's like yoga and blah, blah, blah. But let's just simplify yoga. meditation a little bit. All we're saying meditation consists of is to call God. Look at something as simple as a baby calling his parent. A baby doesn't have to be told to but call mummy. The baby cries. Shows himself to the baby. Yeah, Where is this if God? you cry. Is not showing his if you get up in the morning and you call God, then God will show themselves to you. That's what our message is. Well, not with these eyes. See, like see these message. eyes? These eyes, they're not the same eyes as the mind's eyes. When you close your eyes, you can still see God. So if someone was blind, then they can still see God. Right? There's nothing about God that says like, you know, you know, the, what's that disability uh, inclusiveness? What's it called? You know, like equal opportunities. God's like an equal opportunities employer, yeah? Even if you can't hear, you can still hear God's message. Even if you can't see, you can still see God. And how do you experience God? When you close your eyes and you call the name of God. Very simple. Islam has it. God is in not in I, Yeah, exactly. Exactly, God brother. God is in you. God is He's in me. me. Good. God is in every part that's what of I was that's what I was trying to say but he's got a better voice it's a bit more booming my voice is a bit tired today but okay all right a sincere question yeah okay yes yes we went through this earlier with the brother here so the gurus for us are divine yes the guru reflects God's light like the moon reflects the light of the sun you get it? I just defined it to you. What do you mean? Do they share God's attributes? All knowing, all powerful? Yes. So the gurus, not all of them, but the guru do have, the guru does share God's attributes. For example, the guru does know everything. So you're not monotheistic? So we've got ex no, we are monotheistic because there's only one God. Because the definition of God is different. Because Hindus say the same thing. There's only one God. But he manifests. No, 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 because the, the, yeah, no, 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 we, we, the Guru, the Hindus, they've got thir, 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 33 million. Yeah. 33 million. Yeah. We, have, we, we don't have that. We only got so 10. Have 10. We have got 10, yeah. The principle is similar, I agree. But here's the deal. Here's the deal, yeah. The Hindus, they say that, for example, Shiva, he represents the destroying part of God. That's it. And that Brahma represents the creating part of God. Yeah, and then Vishnu is sustaining. We believe that God has all three powers, right? And that those people are working for God. But they see that person as God. So the gurus, when they came to earth, they're working for God too. Are they part of the big God or the small God? No, they're part of, they're part of the only one God. But, okay, but when they came to earth, yeah, yeah, yeah. was God still in the heaven? Was he still in heaven when they came down to earth? No, no, God's everywhere. He's everywhere. Yeah. Is he in the toilet? You know, this question, yeah, this silly question you're going to no, go. It's question, no, it's a silly question. question. But because it's rude. Here? When you love no, God, no, no, when you love God like no, I do, just, when you I hear something God. like this, God. well, you're speaking but rudely about him. You you're speaking rudely about him. Well, you don't have to go, you don't listen to me. You, you can walk away. You can walk away. He's in the toilet. Okay, let's look. Let's, okay, but are you going to listen? Okay. The question. If you're going to ask me a question, you must listen. Are you going to listen? How long are you going to give me to answer the question? No, 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 not as much as I want. I don't want to go that far. Give, two you, no, two minutes, yeah? But you won't, you won't interrupt because I find it very hard to talk to you. I'm just being honest because you interrupt so much. So you give me two minutes. Are you on the watch? Just take two minutes on the watch just for the sake of it. Okay. So, everything upon earth is made up of elements. Chemistry, right? It's made up of elements. You agree with me? Elements. Chemi chemical elements. And... In the periodic table, it tells you that everything is made up of three things. Protons, neutrons and electrons. You agree? Every one of those three things is sustained by the energy of God. 
Okay. Yeah? Okay. Nothing can exist without his, his power. So therefore, God's energy is inside every single thing. And every single thing here that is here right now, what you call the toilet, was once in space. And then it was once in space, scientifically. Then it solidified into planet Earth. And then planet Earth cooled down and then people came here. Every molecule once was one in space and now it's here. And one day when the world ends, all those molecules will go back into whatever they came from. So the reality is every single thing is got molecules and energy and that energy is God. Is that in your scripture or is that your philosophy? No, it's in our scripture. He's, every, he's in everything. was in space. Where did you, where do you think came from? No, but, well, you said everything is, was in space. Of course. Is, is that in your scripture? Yeah, the one Big Bang and all that kind of stuff is in our scripture, yeah. Okay, but I'm saying, was, was yeah. the toilet the Big Bang. in space? You know what that Big Bang is, yeah? Funny thing about the Big Bang, the Big Bang was not a bang. If you were there 15 billion years ago and you listened to the Big Bang, let's just say, theoretically, you got a time machine, went back in time, what would you hear? You explain your God, you bang? Know than us. No, you wouldn't hear a bang. But there is a sound. There is a sound. Bong, bong. No. Ong. Ong. The sound is Ong. And the Guru says, Ik Ong Kar. The one made the sound, and from that sound came everything. So the Big Bang is described. Listen, to my question, when you say that God is everywhere, I don't think you really asked my question. When I said, Is he in a toilet? I wasn't trying to be disrespectful. Yeah, well, it felt disrespectful. Bro, how can I be because I love God, God. I when God. you say things like that, it sounds I, rude. Listen bro, I believe in God, but when you say He's everywhere, He's everywhere, yeah. you're making a claim, yeah, yeah, yeah. which can be... I just explained it to you. Is no, His presence everywhere? Yeah. Is power everywhere? Because when I say Both. He's in the toilet... It's because because when, you, when you experience Him, you can experience Him everywhere. Absolutely. Am I a creation or am I part of now, 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 You are part of the. You are in creation, but inside you, the finite part of you is part of creation. The finite part of you, your body. You understand that, right? The body is going to fail, fail and go away one day. But inside you is the infinite part of God as well, and that infinite part of God is a soul. So therefore, you are part of the Creator as well. Like, have you heard of Kabirji? You sound like you're from India or something, or Bangladesh. Bangladesh. There's a famous saint in India called Kabirji. Have you heard of him? Okay, anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll leave that being. He was from a Muslim background. So, what he said is, in many quotes in Gurbani talk about this, because you understand Kalak, or I don't know if you're. Creation. Kalak is a creator. So, in Gurbani, in our scripture, it says, Kalak, 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 me Kalak. Yeah? That, the creation is the creator. Yeah, and the creator is in the creation is inside the creator. So is the creator himself a part of the creation or is Well first he's not a gender. He hasn't got a gender. No, go on, what were you saying? What was your question? Let me ask the question. Is the creator part yeah. of the creation? Yes. He's inside the huh? No, he's not part of creation in the sense that you talked about that he's he's absorbed into the creation. Creation's inside him really. Like basically God is like in all no no God Imagine we're inside God, not outside God. So therefore, we're not outside of God because how could something exist independent from God? But you believe the gurus were God and they came down to earth. Everything, yeah. Which is kind of similar to what you're saying. Exactly, yeah. But we don't say that God is part of me because we say God is on top of everything. That's why there's a... But the thing is, we don't like to define God too much because we can never understand God. But, you're, you're, but he's defining God that he's not... You're defining that he's not in this world. But we're saying he's in this world. We can define God's attributes, but we can't. We can say we say He's in this world. Sab mein rav rehya, prab He's inside every single he's thing. Everywhere. He's absorbed into every in single everything. thing, in everything, in everything. In everything. So the good and the bad, including in filthy places so like the toilet. In, yeah, God and including in, in filthy people like filthy, filthy minds. So God yeah, in there as well, that, that, so and in good so places. God, your God, no, God. I never said that. No, 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 no. But because you're being, let me just explain it to you, because you want, you want to. Sometimes people don't understand. Imagine if you've got something which is um, not fully realized, yeah? Like in a seed, you know like a little seed, in a seed there is a tree. You agree? And one day when you plant that seed, you water it, you feed it, it will become a tree. But the seed is not real, the seed is not realized a tree right now. In the same way inside us, is the is God, but it's not realized. So if, for example, a seed comes to you, the questions he has he aren't really here down. to learn. He's here to argue. No, no, no. Here to learn, bro. Well, I don't know I, if you I, are. I'm, I'm sincerely trying to learn. Now, my question is this: If someone comes now to you and he prostrates to you here now, that would be the wrong thing to do. Okay, but he says, but the Guru is inside of you. 
and I believe that you follow Guru's teachings, so I wish to pass it to the Guru, not to you. Yeah, yeah. But because he, the Guru is inside of you, yeah, I yeah. want to pass it to you. What yeah. would you say to that? I would say to him that I am not a fully realized being. But the Guru is inside of you. Yeah, the Guru is inside. inside of yeah, it's true, but there's also a lot, a lot of dirt and, uh, and filthy thoughts and filthy okay, actions so and filthy words. So, where do so I once those two words, somebody worthy of it. Like who? Like the Guru. But he's not here, so where? where no, the Guru is here. Where? In the Guru Granth Sahib Ji. The scripture. The Guru Granth Sahib Ji. The 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 it's not a book. The Guru is here. The Guru Granth Sahib Ji. Well, look, brother, I know it's true what you're saying, but at the same time, the Guru is it the scripture. So the 10th Guru, he gave the. Uh, okay, say, okay, say look, I want to look bro, look, bro, so you've got to let me finish because we had this rule before. You said you'd give me a minute or two to at least answer your question. So the 10th Guru, he gave the Guruship to the Guru Granth Sahib Ji, which is our scripture. Okay? And that is where uh, the scripture, that's what we believe to be the Guru now. So where do you direct your worship? Towards the Gurbani, the words of our Gurus. We don't, uh, if I was to bow now, I wouldn't bow down to anything because there's no Guru Granth Sahib Ji here. So anywhere is fine? No, no, no. Wherever the Guru Granth Sahib Ji is, the scripture. Yeah, where? Like the, in the Gurdwara, the temple. The Sikh temple. It's there at the front. When you, have you been to a Sikh temple? No. Go ahead and have a go. No problem. Everybody's welcome. Is there a specific direction where you are? It's right at the front. Here, give him a leaflet. Here, here. Give him a leaflet so you can understand. Yeah, yeah. He's not allowed to go there. No, of course he's allowed. Everybody's allowed. You don't. Open it up. Open it up. I'll show you with a picture. You see, look, open it up a bit more. See on the, on the yellow bit at the top. We bow down to the script. Top of the yellow bit, bro. Yellow, yellow, yellow. No, that's, that's orange. Yellow, bro. Yellow. But yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, but look, they were bowing down to the scripture. Yeah, we bow down to the scripture. So the scripture itself is yeah. holy. When the Guru was here, we bow down to the Guru. Now we bow down to the scripture. So if you have the book, the... That's right, I'll bow to it. Yeah, that's, that's right. So why did you bow to God himself? So you believe that... For us, the words of God is God. Yes, absolutely, 100%. For us, the scripture is revelation from God, it is the word of God. Okay, so and it is for us, God. The scripture, is it created on truth? Let, let because you know, it's too many questions, bro. Just chill out for a second, yeah? Let me just go back to what I was trying to do. But let, remember, remember, I'm here to do something, you're here to do something. Let me do what I want, what I'm trying to do. I know, but let me try and... You, you will learn a lot more if you shut up and listen. Because, oh, but if you, if, you did actually, if you did actually listen a bit more, in, in the sense of you've got two ears, one mouth, we should try and listen a bit more. Okay, all right, let me, okay, fine. Okay, let me, good. So, the Sikh's philosophy is, like for example, let me talk about the 10th Guru, right? There's an interesting story about the 10th Guru. When the 10th Guru came upon earth, in Pakistan, Punjab, there was a famous Muslim saint called Pir Bikhan Shah. On the day the 10th Guru was born, instead of bowing down towards Mecca, he turned around and bowed down towards the guru, where the Guru was born. He said, today, I feel the light of God is there in Patna. He traveled for months to get to Patna to where Guru Gobind Singh Ji was, the 10th Guru, as a baby. He gets to the 10th Guru and he says, I want to meet this child. They say he's sleeping right now, come back later. When he comes back later, he comes back with two bowls of sweets. And one bowl of sweet is from a Muslim shop. One bowl of sweet is from a Hindu shop. He wants to see what will God prefer. He sees this as a, God of, a light of God. He thinks, let me find out what will God prefer, Hindus or Muslim, Islam or Hinduism. When he puts these bowls in front of the Guru, who's a baby, the Guru does something unexpected. He reaches out and puts his hand on both bowls. He says, I will not have a preference. In the same way, you might think I've got something against Islam, but I've got nothing against Islam. But our faith is separate, and yet... Can you eat halal meat? No, of course not. How about kosher? No. No. No kosher, no halal. It's not against Islam. It's against any ritually sacrificed meat, yeah? But like going back to the point, we're not trying to discriminate against people, no, we're trying to unite people. Bro, There's only one human race. You know when I look at Sikhism, yeah? I see a lot of similarities between Islam and Hinduism. Yeah, I see a lot of both. You mean Islam and Sikhism? Or even Islam no, and Hinduism? No, when I look at Sikhism and the things you're saying to me... Oh, you see similarities I between? See, I see a lot, of big, a lot of mixture between Islam and Hinduism. Yeah. Would you, would you agree with that? Like, Sikhism mm. is a mixture of Islam... Come a bit closer because I don't want to shout, yeah? So, you know this idea, a lot of people have this idea. They think, you know what, it looks a bit like to me, the Guru got a blank piece of paper here, put the Quran on this side, Quran Sharif here, put the Bhagavad Gita here, and then just took writings and wrote it down. A lot of people think that. 
because they see the similarities. But let me explain to you how it works. Firstly, the Guru is saying he got a job from God. On, on page 150 of Guru Granth Sahib Ji, if you go to that ang, yeah, you will see it says that Guru says I got a job from God. Then Guru Nanak Dev Ji says himself, he says, as the words of God come to me, so I'll make them known to people. Guru Gobind Singh Ji says, Kahu so Prabhu so pa kahu, kisu na kaana ra kahu. He goes, I say only what God says to me, I don't listen to anybody else. And he, let's just clarify that. He says, Ram Rahim, Puran, Quran, anek kahe, mat ek na manu. He says, Ram says a lot, Rahim, i.e. Islam, yeah, Puran, means the Hindu books, Quran, Islamic book. He says, anek kahe, they say so much, because I don't accept any of them. Ek na manu. No. But why so, do you direct people to become Muslims? Why? I'll tell you why. Because you know sometimes if you're like, let's say you came to me and you got a doctor. And I got a doctor. But my doctor can definitely fix you up. But your doctor is not bad either. He can do good for you. And you like, you know what, my whole family goes to the doctor. He's close to me. I know him for many years. I don't want to change. But can you help me? Now if I was an uncompassionate person, I would say, you know what, left off, get rid. I can't help you. Unless you become a, a disciple of my doctor, I can't help you. But because my Guru is so compassionate, he wants to give to everybody. So he takes a Muslim and he says to the Muslim, you know what, I'll give to you as well. Okay, I'll give you the guidance a, and how okay. to be a good Muslim. There's a different side to that as well. I could say, if I see, for example, a Hindu prostrating to an idol, I don't say to the Hindu, be a Hindu. I wouldn't do that. Good question. I would say, don't do that. Okay. What you're doing is okay. Wrong, right. Isn't it? When I, can I now answer? Why, now, if the Guru, yeah. Allah, if he did not regard Islam as being the truth, why would you tell Muslims? Because you believe he was talking to the Muslims. That's the Sikhs. That's fine. Let's accept that. He was talking to the Muslims. Why would he tell Muslims to be Muslims if he did not regard Islam to be true? So I'll give you an example, right? Um, that's a very good question, but, but, you gotta, but you must give me two minutes to answer it. Because that's the rule. Yeah, I'll find it hard otherwise. Okay, so when the Guru is telling a Muslim to... He's not telling a Muslim, you've got to pray five times a day. You've got to go to Hajj. You've got to do, keep your whatever that you, that you would say is the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad. He doesn't say that. What he says is you've got to have compassion. You've got to have uh, faith. You've got to have love. All these things. Now, somebody could have those things, but not be doing any of the things that you might say would be the prescribed method. But the Guru would say he's still a good Muslim. Even if a normal Muslim might say, oh, this guy, he don't pray. He don't do any of the things that we should five times a day, blah, blah. He's useless. But actually, by the Guru, he would say, no, he is good. So there's one thing, right? So the Guru does define and give his own slant of Islam. He doesn't leave that person do whatever the person is doing. He does give direction. The Guru actually says to Hindus, don't bow down to idols. So he does say that. He does say to Muslims that you must love everything. You can't just be uncompassionate. When the Guru went to a, a famous king called Babur, have you heard of him? He was a Mughal king. He was a bit of a tyrant. He was killing people. The Guru went to him. He said to Babur, he was arrested by Babur, but Guru went to jail. When he was there, Babur called him out because he was doing miracles in Babur's jail. He was doing miracles and you know in Islam, they see miracles as a sign of prophethood. They said Nabi, yeah? So they said, call him out. Baba said to him, are you a Nabi of God? He said, you know what? What I am, I am. But what you are is a Jabr. Jabr means a tyrant. He used his name, Babur, said you're a Jabr. And the Guru said to him that you are not a good Muslim. Yeah? And the 10th Guru did something very similar. He wrote to a famous Muslim king called Aurangzeb. Have you heard of him? Aurangzeb was also a tyrant. He was a pious Muslim, but he was a tyrant. Yeah? And the Guru said to him in a letter, which we've got still, called a Zafarnama. He wrote a letter to him and he said to him, Listen, Aurangzeb, you are not a man of faith. Yeah? You are not going to get loved by God. And that Aurangzeb was so hurt by the letter, he died. He died after a couple of months after reading that letter. He couldn't cope with the Guru's harsh words. Now, so the Guru doesn't say to a Muslim, just be whatever kind of Muslim you want. He says, be this kind of Muslim. When he goes to a Pandit, he says, be this kind of Pandit. When he says to a Yogi, he says, be this kind of Yogi. So he's giving teachings. What the definition of Muslim is? Of course, the Guru was taught by a Malvi. Okay. He believes in Allah, yeah. Allah yeah. and that he follows the Sunnah of Muhammad. Yeah, Muhammad. that's right. Yeah. yeah. So basically, that definition, what you're saying, is, is more enough to, to just take the word Muslim to understand No, what bro. Muslim. Don't tell me right now. Okay. Oh, let me listen to you. Muslim, yeah. 
Why would he say to the Muslims, be Muslims? Okay, I'll explain to you. Because I'll explain that to you. is defined in itself in a statement. Muslim. Listen to it for a second, right? Oh, let me answer it. He said to people, be this kind of Muslim. Have you understood that? He didn't say, follow Prophet Muhammad's Sunnah. This kind of Muslim would be. He what said, I what I just said to you. He said to you, a Muslim like this, when he says in Bani, be, have mercy, have uh, faith, have um, compassion, have all these things. Then he says, if you become a Muslim, like, uh, you can look it up, no problem. I've got, I've got it here as well. He says, listen, let me just finish my point because you can look it up in a second. He says, if you become a Muslim like this, then that would be amazing. But he does not say, oh, just be any kind of Muslim. I'll give you an example. Okay, go on. He says, it is difficult to be called a Muslim. If one truly is a Muslim, then he may be called one. First, let him save the religion of the Prophet. Savior. Sa save saver. Saver. Save the saver, yeah. So he's saying follow the religion of no, no, he's saying saver. Let him find it in sweet. Ah, sweet. Okay, go on. That's sweet. Uh, don't, be, don't, be, don't be sad to be a Muslim. Be happy. That's what he's saying. Okay, he's saying saver means the flavor. Enjoy the taste. Okay. So so I got him on camera. Don't worry. A true Muslim, a disciple of faith of Muhammad, let him put aside the delusion of death and life. Yeah. yeah. As he submits to God's will yeah. and surrenders to the Creator, yeah. he is rid of selfishness and conceit. Yeah. And when oh no no, he is merciful to all beings. Only then should he be called a Muslim. So you see how the Guru just defined Islam. It's fine, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's it's beautiful. I'm glad you find it. Yeah. I find it beautiful. So we all for, agree. He's saying, from my understanding, what I'm reading this, he's saying yeah. that follow the religion of the Prophet Muhammad and be merciful to everyone, which is exactly what Islam teaches. Well, so that's great, that's isn't it? That's so we got no problem. Are we shaking hands? Happy? Yeah, we're cool, yeah? My, my, my we're cool. problem is this. Is What's your problem, man? I thought you said they've got no problem. The You're problem happy with is, that? No, the problem is... You've always got a problem at the end of it. You should be like, just happy, innit? What I read from the Guru, Nana, is not what I hear from you. Because when I asked you earlier, I asked you, do you believe a Muslim, by being a Muslim, who, who is merciful, is that enough to take him to heaven and salvation? I said no. yes. No, I said no. yes. No, you no. Said, oh, uh, because you know what? There's a problem. Yeah. There's a problem with Islam. The people like ISIS, Al Qaeda. I'm not talking about ISIS. No, but let me talk about them. I'm saying no, but let me do, you give me the, give me two minutes. Like I said, let give me give me two minutes, yeah, because you asked me the question. So let me answer it now. There is a problem. It's the hardcore radical Muslims, right? That give Islam a bad name, right? Okay, but they're not but, let me, they? but no, but they're not. So so now if the guy from Daesh turns up and he goes, I say with the Prophet Muhammad is sweet. I follow Islam, but he's not merciful towards all beings. Therefore, he's not as Muslim as by Gunanaji. He's not a true Muslim. Yeah. So therefore, the Guru is defining Islam. Yeah. He's okay. giving a definition of Islam okay. that anybody can take and understand that these guys, as per the Guru, they're ex, these guys, they're tick. Okay. So fine. otherwise, how are you going to find out? So now I know what kind of Muslim I can get along with and what kind of Muslim I can't. Now I know. So, bro, can I ask you a question? Yeah? In that case, if I, I accept what you say, let's go with what you say. Could you as a seed? Yeah. Why can you not be a Muslim and follow that definition per what you and I were saying? Okay. And we have, have some issues. Okay. Let's say you went. Okay. All right. Okay. Just so got any, any okay. Sikh can okay. Basically, let, 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 clear. Okay. Any as long as you give me two minutes afterwards. Last, my, my last point and I'll go away. Okay, great. The point is this any Sikh per Guru Nanak's definition can become a Muslim per his definition and get salvation, yes or no? Can be blessed, yeah. It's difficult to be called. That's no, a high level no, no, no. Guru Sahib. I'm saying any Sikh okay. can become a good Muslim, right. follow the teachings of Prophet Muhammad on him, okay. and get salvation. But are you going to give me two minutes? Yes, go ahead. As long as you don't interrupt me again. Okay. Let's say you went to a doctor. Say, doctor, I'm happy with my doctor. Give me some advice. And he gives you some advice. Well, no, why are you interrupting? No, no, let me ask you. I am, I am answering the question. Yeah, but you're, not you're not listening. listening. That's the thing. Two okay. minutes you said, but well, you're not listening. You're interrupting. It's a philosophy, bro. It's a very but simple question. It's, simple. I'm giving you a simple answer, and I'm sure you'll understand it. Bro, if you don't want to listen to it, then don't listen to it. But then don't ask the question. But I've got, I'm answering your question. Did you give me this answer before? No, no, but I haven't given you this answer. You're, assu you're assuming. You know, they say assumption yeah, is not a good thing to do. You know, in the word assume, you make an ass out of you and me. Yeah, let me explain to you what the answer is. Okay, now the guru, why if I went to the guru and he gave me this verse, right? And in that verse said it would be difficult to become a Muslim, why would I listen to the guru? 
because I trust him. If I trusted the Guru and I listened to his advice, what, what, what's the first advice I should listen to? The advice he gives me first. As a Sikh, he tells me to wake up in the morning and read Jabji Sahib. He does not tell a Muslim to get up in the morning and read Jabji Sahib, but he tells a Sikh to read Jabji Sahib. So, when he's telling his Sikhs to read Jabji Sahib, and I trust him because, he's a, because I'm a Sikh and he's my Guru, then the first thing I would do is listen to what he tells me to do, right? If he's giving advice to those people, that's great. But I'm a Sikh, I want to listen to his So the Sikhs are not going to convert to Islam because the Sikhs are going to listen to what the Guru tells them to do. And you know what the Guru tells them to do? He says, wake up in the morning, read my words. Jabji Sahib, Jab Sahib, Sreyye, five prayers in the morning. Wait, wait, no, two minutes. Then he says in the evening, read Rara Sahib. Go to Gurdwara. He also says something very interesting. He says, never listen to the translations and the explanation of Gurbani from a non-Sikh. Listen to them from a Sikh. Because someone is going to come along and twist those words and mess you up in the head. So the advice he gave the Sikhs is listen to the Sikhs to work out what Gurbani is saying, not to somebody else. So when I go to him, I trust him, I respect him. So I listen to him for what he tells me to do. He might give advice to anybody else, I'm, I don't care. So he gives Sikh advice to me. A Sikh is going to follow Sikhi and get salvation. So the guarantee is there. So if if a Sikh choose to become a Muslim, then good luck to them. Whatever they want to do, go ahead. Would they reach? Would they, would they it, salvation? I can't guarantee that. I'm not the person to guarantee that. It depends on their own actions. However, there is one guarantee. The one guarantee we do have in Sikhi, I don't know what's only. The one guarantee we have is that if you follow Sikhi and listen to it and listen to Gurbani and follow it, then you will get salvation. So if you listen to the Guru's words, take Amrit and then follow those uh, so when the the prayers. The Guru said that to become a merciful Muslim, he wasn't really being, he was just speaking metaphorically. No, no, not metaphorically. He was saying, you know what, it's difficult to get even to that level. It's not a bad level, but that he didn't say you will get salvation. In that verse that you read out, there was nothing that said you will get salvation. He didn't say it. No, but no, exactly. So there's no guarantee there. But, why would he direct but there's a guarantee. Listen, if you if you uh, get insured, if you go to the insurance company and you say, I tend to lose my keys a lot, right? Can you get me key insurance? They go, yeah, but it's gonna cost you. Hold on, let me finish it. And the key insurance is X amount. You say, you know, but I don't. You know, what if I'm really careful? They go, well, maybe it might work. But he doesn't give you a guarantee. But the guru gives a guarantee to the Sikhs that follow Sikhi. If you follow it properly, you will get it. Is that not a guarantee to Muslims as well? It's a guarantee that's a good level to be. That's good advice. Level. That's advice. So what do you mean good level? That's advice. Good, but it's not good enough. It's not a guarantee, it's advice. It's not a guarantee. Well, it is. There are, if it's not a guarantee, isn't that be deceitful? Because no. we want to know the truth. But if you read if, if you want to know the truth. If he wasn't speaking the truth, if he was saying that it's a good level, but it's not you know, the whole level. It has to be deceitful, isn't it? Because no. want to know the truth. But, but the people that can't... Yeah, true. Yeah. true. Yeah. That's why a lot of Muslims, my friend, converted to Sikhi. Okay. A lot of them came to him and they listened to the truth. Yeah. But then they might have thought, hold on, what are you offering me? I know what I'm, you're telling me here, you're telling me there, okay, but, but what are you offering me? And a lot of them converted. Islam says in, in the deen, in the Allah of Islam, the only religion in Islam, the only religion in the Son of God, which is the truth, is Islam. There's yeah. nothing in Islam that says that Sikhism is the truth, Hinduism is the truth, Christianity is the truth. Now, well, that's it, why you're following it, Islam, isn't it? No, exactly, that's but, why you follow it. But, but we but, don't believe that. No religion. Yeah. Guru Nanak was saying that, look, in Islam, if you're a good Muslim, if you follow the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi In the way that Guru described. Then you will become, you will attain salvation. Well, the thing is, there's some things about the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad that we would not recommend. Okay, but I'm saying what the Guru says. You understand, no? You understand, no? No, no, not even what the Guru's recommended. The, the, the proof of that is this. Yeah, he says, you say, you, you see Islam is sweet, you don't get dukhi about it. You love Prophet Muhammad, that's fine. But there's some actions that he did that we wouldn't re we wouldn't recommend. And, did he say and Guru Gobi Singh Ji, did he say that as I'm just I'm getting to that now. Yeah. Guru Gobi Singh Ji in their bani, they talk about Prophet Muhammad, and they say that actually he was sent yeah. for a mission, but he didn't complete it. He he didn't complete it because he joined people to him. Okay. Yeah. And the, the the problem with it was is that people never got to understand the idea of the name of God. The name of God, right? The experience of the divine through the name of God. So therefore, he does say that that's why he was sent. And logically, 
if you and me, lo logically, Rahman, which is one of the names of God, doesn't matter. He, t he, used, oh, he used loads of words. Okay. Like I said to you earlier, words don't make a difference. But I'll give you one example. Just think about logically. Me and you are logical people, right? If you saw a teacher, if you heard that God has sent a new teacher upon earth, that would probably be because what was here wasn't working. You understand? So the thing is, Guru Nandai Ji and Guru Gobind Singh are saying that what was there before wasn't working. And he still directed the Muslims to be Muslims. He just directed them to be a Muslim like this. But, that's, that's but again, again, no, no, listen, listen, you're not getting it. But he still said, if you want to be a Sikh, I, if, this if is Sikh. If I consider Hinduism to be flawed, but there's some good in it. I would not say to a Hindu, be a Hindu, even though it's good, but there's some flaws in there, but be a Hindu. I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't. Now, if you're a man of God or you're yeah. God yourself, Bro, you, if you, you know what a dead donkey is? God. You know what a dead donkey is? Once a dead donkey is dead, you can't hit it and say, hurry up, move. Okay. Yeah, this is conversation now. Okay. It's thrashing a dead donkey. I've already explained it to you, my friend. All right, thank you so much.